Matt made the video talking about, about Samson going out shooting him and his wife and him um, going to the barbershop to actually, you know, enjoy yourself and take his time and this and that. He always comparing Samson real harshly. Like he have a heart on himself. He have a heart on for Samson ever since Samson blocked him. Like the video, he like, Samson, go ahead and unblock me and come on my show and we can address this and that. Like, why must someone be so focused about being blocked? That don't bother me. You know, um, I seen Samson page. I follow him. Like everybody already know, I got a lot of money betted on him and everything. I always, regardless, I call anyone out. I call Samson out, but in a respectful manner. You see what I'm saying? Samson ain't blocked me. Um, I went on my way because I seen that he was doing his thing. And I was like, okay, y'all know I have chapters pretty much all over the West Coast. So I'm the plug. So I, will, I read y'all to him to see if he needed me to send one of my barbers out to him because one of the presidents of my um, Vegas chapter has a big barber shop because I didn't know if he wanted to move around or whatnot. So, but when I seen that he was at the barber shop, that made me feel good because I was like, damn, I don't want him to have any stress leading up to getting on that stage because I really feel like he have everything and that he's going to take it, right? So I did that, doing my due diligence, right? Now, that's no here or there. Matt sitting here talking about Heidi Trupon, Andrew Jack, they suffering. Bodybuilding is only suffering before you step on the stage, right? This is the thing. This is, I want, this is what I want you to do, Matt. You have so much to say about bodybuilders that's on a level past me and you both. Get your pro card and show us how it's supposed to be done. Because all you're doing now is attacking and cyberbullying bodybuilders, and especially Sam Samson. You man, you especially cyberbullying Samson by always speaking ill on him. You don't have much positive things ever to say besides that one video. You you have to admit that he looked good because I'm quite sure you heard Jay Cutler say that he looked amazing. You see what I'm saying? But when that competition, you said he looked like trash. You said, well, not those words. And you said that he didn't show no improvement. But Jay Cutler said the totally opposite. And I know you caught when Jay Cutler said that he don't understand why certain channels speak so harshly on Samson. He's talking about you, my guy. He's talking about you. You're burning bridges. Yes, you're getting people to come on your channel. But guess what? Everybody going to come on it right now to suck your little buzz that you're getting. I'm trying to help you from crashing and burning. You don't understand that, that's on you. But to keep on talking so harshly about somebody that you can't hold a candle next to, can't stand next to, is crazy. It's crazy as hell. This is the part where you relax. You go into the stage very calm. The person that's the most relaxed is the one who body reacts the, the best. If... Suffering don't mean you on no treadmill in a stair mill. <laughs> That's not suffering. Go watch Ronnie Coleman. He walked the same pace. Samson walking the same pace as Ronnie Coleman. I'm tired of you guys talking about Kevin Mavroni slept on the floor for three months, four months of his prep. What does that fucking mean? It don't mean anything. All that mean is the floor is just good for the back. When you're putting all that weight on, the floor is good for the back. It's more comfortable. It's air cooler on the lower level you run and train so the body is getting hot when you're on the floor guess what the body does not sweat as much see kevin and share that with you guys how do i know because i've been doing it for over two years right next to my bed why because it's comfortable down there that's nothing special about sleeping on the floor you dick riders and you guys that's doing y'all research on everybody that was before y'all time and talking about the peoples in today's time and trying to compare them, that's what let me know y'all not really educated when it comes to this because you can't compare no time zone from the next time zone. You can't do that. There's no way you can compare it. Why? Because you can't put those individuals in that time zone right now in today's time and compare them. Y'all have all these different 
theories and this and that, the science of the chemistry was even different. The science of the training was even different. Everybody know you don't flat bench because it's a pec tear. It will kill your pec. So the majority of people now do what? Hammer strength machines, uh, Smith machines, incline. You see what I'm saying? So, Matt, go get your fucking pro card, bro, because you need to show us how it's supposed to be done because apparently you know better than the top three Mr. Olympia. You say his glutes, his hamstrings ain't in. They're in now. Now what? They're not good enough. And then you post a picture next to Sean Roden. That was like crazy because, like, really? Come on now. Nobody could do that pose but Sean Roden. All the hardness in Sean Roden. It's like, dude, you talk like, you are this phenomenal bodybuilder that only suffer in order to wait. Get off that fucking high horse, bro. Get off that high horse. If nobody going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. You're burning bridges. At the competition, no bodybuilder in the back had anything pleasant to say about you. You wonder why Martin blocked you? I know why he blocked you. And it makes total sense on why he blocked you. And a lot of people is going to do that if you continue doing what you're doing. Get this Nick Jilly attitude out of you. Stop being in bodybuilding BS 2.0. Go back to where you, where you started. The way you started, that's what got me to want to be a part of your, your movement. That's what got me to get a lot of my followers to follow you. Let's be clear. I know I have thousands of followers to follow you. I know that for a fact. Whenever I put my name on anything, people's gain. I know that for a fact. Now, all of this um, showboating and thinking because you're getting Cormier and all of these guys. Cormier, we all talk about you, bro. Like, stop burning bridges. You know, um, shit. It's just... It's, it's sad because I'm watching someone that have a really bright future cutting his shit so short. And I have longevity in this. Even with being blackballed in certain parts of this fitness community, I still have longevity and consistency. You know, like, you don't know what it's like to be on no pro stage. You don't know what it's like to push it to a level of a pro level. NPC is totally different you know it's totally different it's just like jc college high school and d1 college in pros it's different bro you don't know so stop being so judgmental all that judgmental shit is weak sauce now me personally i'm gonna let you know i have nothing personally against you besides you are constantly cyber bullying and tearing down bodybuilders and especially samson i could go on every other youtuber that makes a video about him no one say the harsh shit that you say you point out things no one see we don't see it there's nothing wrong with him going to take some downtime for an hour or two to do something other than sit in a fucking hotel room sit in a hotel room all day and just pose and eat. I just did that this past competition. It don't do nothing. It makes you stress even more. It make your body go to shit. But you never did it like that. But you want everybody to do it like that because you did it in a fucking amateur level way. Come on now, man. If getting a pro card is so easy and anyone can do it, go get yours and show us exactly how it's done in the 212s or the classics. Go get your pro card. Get that motherfucker by the by the beginning of the year or next year, 2025. Get your pro card, get on a pro stage and show us exactly how it's done so I can be rooting for you just like I do all the other bodybuilders that's doing their shit. Because I root for all bodybuilders, all bodybuilders. Go get yours. Go get yours. That's a challenge. Get your pro card and you show us exactly how it's done. I'm glad Phil, Phil Kahara, however you pronounce his last name, I'm glad when y'all was talking about Nick and he spoke up and he's not a sheep and he understand how important and how fragile the mind is when you get to certain stages 
of this prep and all of that and having compassion and empathy. He's the only one that had that. All the other folks that was on there and, and Cormier also had some compassion, but everyone else that was throwing daggers, all of y'all are wrong because y'all don't know what mental frame and mental space that person is in. When we take all these different compounds, the most dangerous part of bodybuilding is not prepping. It's the last eight to 10 days leading up to the stage is when it's the most dangerous. It's the very most dangerous. And that's when the mind really can do some weird shit that could throw your body off. But hey, you got all the answers. I just want to see you turn pro so you can show us exactly how it's done.